I've just been blown away, guys, by the ecosystem that's in the backyard. It's been getting better and better every year. Um, I've never seen more honeybees in one place in my life. They're certainly not my bees, but there is a huge number of them on this bee balm plant. I mean, you could count, and you could sit here all day. I was here looking at this thing earlier. Uh, I've been out here all day, and there's like an always an abundance of bees on this plant. 15 to 20 bees, minimum. Um, and they just seem happy. That's just what they're doing. It's kind of crazy to think that's their life, but the ecosystem here, again, like I said, it, was just, it just keeps getting better and better, and it's not just nice to see how things change in terms of what's planted and how it grows and our harvests and see how tasty everything is, but the nature around us has become more abundant and more beautiful over the years. And something else that's been flowering actually is our potatoes and they're, they're, um, that's a sign that they're almost ready to be harvested and you can harvest at that point. You can get the really small potatoes on the surface. Um, this is them right here. This is the German butterball variety. Really tasty, especially because of how small they are and how the skin hasn't really developed. These are really nutty, really smooth, really buttery. And then of course we've harvested as well for dinner tonight, some shallots, some multiplier onions. And um, they didn't do it nearly as well as I had hoped. In fact, the bulbs are not really that big, but um, I am gonna eat them and they are really tasty. So definitely excited for all this combined with some other things I picked earlier the week in the week, like um, some spinach. We have some broccoli heads. And we're gonna have ourselves a nice homegrown dinner tonight. It's Sunday. Life is good. Now, some other thing here that I wanna mention, another ecosystem is with these peaches. And the peaches attract a pest called plum cacurlio. And what I've been doing for years now, this is the second year, I've been making sure that I've been picking up all the peaches. All the peaches that fall, um, I certainly had thinned them out and left the peaches on the ground. I think that was okay. But another way of thinning them is actually just to let them fall. Um, I mean, you definitely want to thin them out yourself, but in addition to that, the plum cacurlio in the area will infect some of the fruits and that will cause some of them to fall prematurely. They're probably not the best to eat if they end up getting ripe. So I think it's best to pick them off and the ones that do fall, pick them up and then put them in a bucket here. Gather them all up and then dispose of them. And you can see here's some that, just a mixed bag of some that have been eaten by birds prematurely, some that got infected. But overall, the plum cacurlio damage was next to nothing. And I think it has a lot to do with me stopping that life cycle of picking up these peaches, bringing in more pollinators, more beneficial insects that has changed the balance of the population in this particular area, um, at least in my microclimate. Uh, it could also have a lot to do with the influx of birds that we've been getting. A huge amount of birds have been attracted to this property. It's uh, kind of scary, but I'm seeing at least three to four different types of bees and seven or eight different types of birds and I haven't really seen too many strange insects this year there hasn't been many pests on next to anything um, something that has sort of been though affected is the apple trees the young apple trees that were transplanted weaker root systems I just think they also are weaker plants so they just get affected by aphids much easier um, in addition, my tomatoes have been pretty heavily infected by aphids, and I haven't seen too many ladybugs, I'm not going to lie. But where I have seen them, they haven't been over here on the tomatoes, and it would be nice if they would join the party because there is so much food 
on specific tomato plants. There's one back in here. This is my green zebra that's really taking a hit. You can see how dead it looks. It has nothing to do with the weather. Some of these are just really heavily infected, even though they're growing very vigorously. I have a feeling the green zebra just couldn't keep up with the infection. So I don't know. Those are just some words, guys, that I wanted to share with you all on the ecosystem here. And we also have another bee bomb plant here that's just also covered in these bees, guys. It's such a beautiful sight. Um, we also have on the other side of the yard is a butterfly bush. Um, between the butterfly bush, the bee bomb, the comfrey, and believe it or not, the shallots that are flowering have all really increased and improved, I think, the ecosystem here in my yard. So I wanna thank all you guys for watching this video. Um, hopefully you guys learned something. If you're interested, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Check out the new blog as well, rossratty.wixsite.com slash blog. All sorts of different content over there besides what you guys see in the video. So again, thank you for watching and we'll catch you all tomorrow in tomorrow's video. Take care, everyone.